Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 30th of January 2022 and we're publishing our week four of our gold and silver update ending the 28th of January which show both gold and silver prices falling, particularly silver, after the FOMC announcement last Wednesday. Now this is the same video as we produced yesterday, our normal weekly update, and so if you've listened to that one, there's no need to listen to this one. If you haven't, then here we go. Gold fell $42 last week, falling from $1,835 to $1,792, having hit a high of $1,854 and a low of $1,780, a fall of 2.3%. In sterling terms, it finished the week at £1,338. That's down £16. And in euros, it closed at €1,607. That's down 10 euros. Silver fell $1.80, falling from 24.30 to 22.50, having hit a high of 24.33 and a low of 22.18, a fall of 7.4%. In sterling terms, silver closed at £16.78, that's down £1.16 on the week. And in euros, it closed at 20.18 euros. That's down 1.24 euros. The gold to silver ratio rose from 75.5 to 1 to 79.6 to 1, more than reversing last week's fall. Bitcoin has risen $2,480 and currently stands at $37,000. $745. Now looking at equities, we can see that the Dow Jones closed on Friday at 34,727. Now that's up 564 points on the day and 462 points up on the week. The S&P 500 closed at 4,431, up 105 points on the day and up 34 points on the week. And even the Nasdaq managed to be in positive territory. It closed on Friday at 13,770, up 417 points on the day, and up two points on the week. Thereby showing that had it not been for Friday's rise, equity markets would have been down again this past week. Now looking at oils, not great news really for those of us who fill our cars on a regular basis. Brent crude closed at $90.03, up $2.14 on the week, and hitting that level we've predicted for some weeks now. And WTI crude closed at $86.82, that's a rise of $1.69 on the week. And again, do not be surprised if we see $90 WTI crude before February is out. The dollar index stands at 97.27, that's up. 1.63 on the week, that's a substantial rise, and another prediction reached when only a short time ago the index fell below 95 and we stated it will touch 97 again soon. So we're gratified of course to have been right, but concerned about the effect this will have on US exports. We concluded last week's video with the following forecast. Our best normal trading calculations have gold trading between 1800 and 1875, and 1775 and 1900 as outliers, and we see silver trading between 2375 and 2480, and 23 to 2525 as outliers. Now, gold did in fact trade within our trading range, closing within our outlier range, but just below our normal range. As we suspected, gold prices rose early in the week, and a rather hawkish fed, as we highlighted in our Thursday broadcast, see link below, really hit precious metals for six, especially as traders and economists are talking about not only four, but even five interest rate rises in 2022. 
and if that were not to be achieved, higher percentage rises. The result, obviously, has been a significant strengthening in the US dollar index, back above its recent highs of 97, the flattening of the yield curve with the 10-year yield declining more than the 2-year yield, further dampened gold's expectations. From a technical point of view, we have a degree of support at $1,769, and perhaps, in our view, most certainly, stronger support at 1750 a psychological level and one in which gold seems not to want to deviate that far from and with a december low of 1753 just above this level it adds some additional strength resistance is seen at the psychological 1800 dollar level and the 50 day moving average of 1802 just above it now those who follow technical analysis will not have missed the fact that the 50-day moving average crossed below the 200-day moving average, thereby causing what is known in the trade as the death cross, which usually leads to lower prices. Adding to this, we have the fast stochastic generating a crossover sell signal, and the MACD also has generated a crossover sell signal. So from a technical point of view at least, we should be expecting lower gold prices. Silver really had the jitters from the very start, and then just continued its descent. Whilst we expected gold to outperform silver, simply because silver had truly outperformed gold the previous week, by quite a high margin. Now that position reversed this week, and silver actually fell 50 cents below our outlier range prediction. Ironically, it operated within the range we allowed for the previous week. Now, technically, silver has considerable support at the $22 level and $21.50 below that, which is just above where the 200-day EMA sits. We now have resistance at $22.95 at the 50-day moving average. The fast stochastic is suggesting an oversold position, while the MACD indicates a sell signal, so we have a little conflict there. Now, before we talk about our predictions for this coming week, it's worth looking at the economic data first. We had improving consumer confidence index, though the UMICH consumer sentiment index was down. Home sales starts were up, and we saw lower than anticipated initial jobless claims. Core PC inflation was, as expected, at 0.5% for December, while PCE inflation year-on-year year was higher than anticipated at 4.9%. Consumer spending for December was well down on November, but actually marginally better than forecast. We now have to bear in mind that PCE inflation is at the highest level than for decades, and clearly with the Fed's hawkish language on Wednesday, they simply cannot ignore this trend. Inflation for sure is not transitory and has to be dealt with. So, looking at the US economic data this coming week, on Monday we have the Chicago PMI for January, Tuesday the Market Manufacturing PMI, ISM Manufacturing Index both for January and Construction Spending for December. Wednesday we have the ADP Employment Report, Thursday the usual weekly jobless claims, but we also have for January the Market Services Final PMI and the ISM Services Index. And we also have factory orders for December. And then on Friday, the all-important non-farm payrolls for January, together with the unemployment rate and average hourly earnings. So we have an important week for economic data, which we suspect will support the Fed's intentions to adopt a hawkish monetary approach. Perhaps the only potential fly in the ointment here is the prospect of disappointing employment figures. But rampant inflation, at least for now, will be the Fed's priority. Of course, if the employment figures are higher, then without doubt it will fully justify the Fed's actions as far as they are concerned. Now, geopolitically, we have simmering away the potential threat of Russia entering Ukraine by force while the EU and US are crafting sanctions on Russian debt, 
banks and individuals. And President Biden stated that he will send American forces to Eastern Europe. Reporting today by Bloomberg, Goldman Sachs has also come out predicting that the Fed will raise rates five times this year. So attempting to calculate potentially conflicting influences on both the gold and silver price, our best forecast for this coming week is we see gold trading between 1750 and 1850 and we're holding 1725 to 1875 as outliers and we see silver trading between 2175 and 24 which is quite a large spread and 2150 and 2450 as outliers. We've widened our spreads a little this week, especially for silver, as an awful lot can actually happen in either or in both directions. What do you think? Do share your thoughts. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel, not forgetting to press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. And finally, we wish you a safe, enjoyable weekend a prosperous week ahead, and during next week, we shall give our 2022 forecast for both gold and silver prices now that the normal January hype is out of the way. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.